A guy named Adam Bell received a voice message from his mother who is worried about him and asks how he can live like this. The message remains unanswered. In the next scene we see a closed party where strange, grim things are happening. A woman let a large spider out of a plate, and it was truly a mesmerizing sight. Adam is a history professor at a college. His life is as gray and steady as the city he lives in. Every day is the same as the previous one. At night Adam doesn't sleep, suffering from insomnia. His girlfriend Mary visited him, but she didn't stay for long. In lectures, Adam gives the same material to students of different grades. Everything repeats time and again. Nothing in Adam's life changes, and this plunges him into melancholy. One day a colleague asked him if he watches movies in his free time. Adam was a bit taken aback by such a strange question and replied that he is not fond of it. Nevertheless, the colleague advised him to rent one comedy film produced by a local movie studio. Since Adam didn't have any plans for the evening anyway, he went to the video rental after work to get that film. Later, Mary visited him again, but Adam still had to check the student's papers. He could have sat in the kitchen all night, but at some point Adam got fed up with it and turned on the movie. Adam didn't particularly enjoy watching it, so he went to the bedroom where Mary was. Soon she was getting ready to leave as usual, saying she would call tomorrow. That night, Adam dreamt of snippets from the movie. One of the actors looked exactly like him, and it seemed creepy to Adam. He decided to rewatch the movie and fast forward. The actor was indeed his exact double, just looking a few years younger. The next morning, Adam was late for his lecture. However, while teaching the students, Adam was immersed in strange thoughts. His double from the movie still bothered him. Adam was determined to find out the actor's name, so he watched the movie credits and made a list of all the actors. After that, Adam started searching for information on Google. Apparently, the actor's name is Daniel St. Clair. In addition to appearance, he matches Adam in height and weight. Daniel's filmography is not rich, he has only appeared in three movies. Adam immediately went to the video rental and got the remaining two films, after which he watched it. From now on, all Adam's thoughts are occupied by the double, he even compared his photo with Daniel's. During the lectures, Adam can't focus on the material at all, and at home he constantly looks at Daniel's photo. The mother tries to call Adam, but he ignores her calls. Adam found on the internet the contacts and address of the Volga talent agency where Daniel works. Full of determination, Adam went to the store to buy sunglasses. Now he is ready to meet the double and went to the address of the talent agency. However, one can't enter the office without a pass. Adam waited for someone to open the door. The security guard mistook him for someone named Anthony and commented that he was unrecognizable because of his beard. Adam played his role convincingly, so the guard didn't suspect a thing. However, Adam was in for a disappointment. Since it was Saturday, there was no one else in the office. Adam pretended that he had come to pick something up. The security guard said that there was indeed something for him at reception and handed him an envelope. Taking it, Adam hurried to leave. In the car, he unzipped the envelope meant for Daniel. Inside was another envelope marked confidential. It was for Anthony. Adam drove to the address indicated on the envelope. He hesitated for a long time before taking any action, but then called the number he had learned at the agency. The call is answered by some woman, mistaking Adam for Anthony. She was puzzled as to why he was calling home and pretending not to know her. Adam tried to explain the situation, saying he was calling Anthony Clare, an actor who starred in films under the stage name Daniel St. Clair. The woman thought Daniel was just joking, but at some point she realized something was wrong. Apologizing, Adam hung up. This conversation sent him into a panic. He couldn't recover for a long time, not understanding what was happening. At home, Adam called the same number again. This time Anthony picked up and asked who it was. Realizing this was the same person who had bothered his wife yesterday, Anthony threatened to call the police. When Adam began to convince him that their voices were the same, Anthony hung up. Adam called him again and asked to listen. Nervously, Adam introduced himself and explained that he had watched his movie and realized that they looked identical. Therefore, Adam believed they should meet. Helen, Anthony's wife, was disturbed by the unfolding situation. Of course Anthony had no intention of meeting with Adam, considering him a psycho. However, Helen was convinced the husband was lying to her because this was at least strange. Anthony assures her that he was on the phone with that guy, but Helen continues to insist that the husband has been unfaithful to her. In her opinion, that guy was a jealous husband of one of Anthony's mistresses. He didn't want to hear any more of this nonsense and said he intended to go for a walk. Pregnant Helen was left alone in the apartment and checked the call history of her husband. The last number was undefined. That same evening, Anthony searched the internet for information about Adam Bell, a history teacher. The college's website listed the entire faculty. There were no photos, but there were contact details. Helen can't sleep, suspecting her husband is texting another woman. Later, 
She secretly took a note with the name Adam Bell from her husband's jacket and also started looking for information on the internet. The next day, Helen went to the college to meet him in person. Meanwhile, Adam received a call from Anthony, who had decided to meet him after all. They agreed to meet on Saturday at a motel an hour's drive from the city. Of course Adam was very nervous. Helen waited a long time for the mysterious guy at the campus building. Finally she saw a man who looked exactly like her husband. Helen couldn't believe it. Gathering her courage, she approached Adam and sat down on a bench next to him. Of course it wasn't her husband, so he didn't recognize her. Noticing the woman's condition, Adam asked if everything was alright. She was puzzled, because Adam's voice was identical to Anthony's. Before leaving, Adam wished her a good day. Helen immediately called her husband, but she was so shocked that she couldn't say anything. Helen returned to the apartment, experiencing a strange, frightening feeling. When Anthony also arrived, Helen wondered whether it was her husband. Meanwhile, Anthony acted as if nothing had happened. He mentioned that he wanted to shave his beard because it was too hot outside. He also reproached his wife for buying canned blueberries instead of fresh ones. Helen remained silent all day, not understanding what was happening. Anthony demanded her to answer what was wrong. With tears in her eyes, Helen confessed that she had gone to see that guy. According to her, he was an exact replica of Anthony. He didn't understand what that meant. His wife was talking absolute nonsense. Also, Helen was sure that the husband was hiding something from her. At night, Adam woke up from a nightmare about a certain private party. After that, he couldn't fall asleep anymore. On Saturday, he drove to the address of that motel. Adam intended to hand the envelope to its rightful owner. Finally Adam entered the pre-booked room, but Anthony wasn't here yet. Suddenly steps were heard outside the door. Adam got even more nervous. Apparently, Anthony was feeling the same way, as he hesitated to enter. And so the doppelgangers met. They were both confused, having no idea how this was possible. Anthony demanded Adam to show his hands. Anthony suspected that they might be brothers, but Adam had doubts about it. Then Anthony asked him if he had a scar on his ribs. Adam was so shocked that he couldn't answer anything, but by the reaction of the doppelganger, Anthony deduced that he also had a scar. Panicking, Adam said he had made a mistake. He put the envelope on the bed, apologized and hurried to leave. Getting into his car, Adam drove away while Anthony picked up the envelope. Soon Adam saw Anthony pass by on his motorcycle. He stopped the car, trying to recover. Returning home, Anthony assured his wife that the guy would not bother them anymore. However, Anthony himself still couldn't make sense of what had happened, just like Helen. All of this seemed like a nightmare. Every participant in this strange story can't think of anything else anymore. Now already Anthony is watching Adam and his girlfriend Mary, who looks a bit like Helen. It seems that the doppelgangers prefer similar women. Anthony drove by Mary, who was unsuspecting. Later, he followed her onto a trolley bus, where he blended in with the crowd. Anthony kept his eyes on Helen and continued to follow the woman to her office, and then watched her through the window. Mary still didn't notice him. Both Anthony and Adam feel they're slowly going mad. In the end Adam told his mother everything. She thought her son was just becoming paranoid, and was surprised that he hates blueberries. The woman wants to pretend that the son didn't tell her any strange story. She believes he should get married and have children as soon as possible, and not have any illusions about an acting career. However, this madness is consuming Adam more and more, as well as Anthony, who is rehearsing the upcoming conversation with the doppelganger in front of the mirror. Adam didn't expect Anthony to come to him unannounced at all. Anthony is here because he has questions. First and foremost, he's interested in why Adam was looking for him. Adam confessed that it was simple curiosity that drove him, but then it went too far. Suddenly Anthony asked the doppelganger if he had been on a date with Helen. Adam replied that it was complete nonsense. However, Anthony doesn't believe him and proposes a deal. Tomorrow Adam will give him his clothes and car so he can meet with Mary and spend time with her. After that, Anthony will disappear from their lives forever. That way they'll be even. In the end Adam agreed to these terms. Dressed in the doppelganger's clothes, Anthony left. Adam was deep in thought, realizing that what was happening contradicted common sense. Full of determination. Anthony picked up Mary after work. Of course she had no idea that it wasn't her boyfriend, but his doppelganger. Anthony had no idea that Adam had come to his house. He lied to the concierge that he had lost his keys, so the man offered to open the door for him. The concierge was obviously well acquainted with Anthony and said he had to get back to that private club. Adam understood that Anthony and the concierge were keeping a secret. Adam played along so the man wouldn't suspect anything. The concierge opened Anthony's apartment, and Adam walked in unhindered. Helen wasn't here so Adam was free to rummage through the doppelganger's belongings and change into his clothes. Now they had swapped places. However, they were differentiated by the fact that Anthony liked blueberries. At one point Adam noticed a picture of Anthony. 
It was identical to his own photo. Soon Helen returned, surprised that her husband was at home. She thought he was at his mother's. Adam was confused and made every effort not to give himself away. While Anthony was with Mary, Helen noticed that her husband was behaving strangely. But Adam despite everything, continued to play his role. At one point Helen asked how his classes went. Adam pretended he didn't understand what she meant. Probably, Helen was trying to see if it was her husband or not. Mary noticed a wedding ring mark on her boyfriend's finger and suspected that he wasn't who he claimed to be. Mary rushed to leave, but in the end agreed to get in the car with Anthony. They drove in silence. At night, Helen noticed that her husband was crying and asked what had happened. He said he just couldn't sleep. On his finger was Anthony's wedding ring. Meanwhile, he was trying to convince Mary that she was delusional. A conflict occurred between them, which led to an accident. The next morning, the news reported about the accident, but for Adam it didn't matter anymore. He had taken Anthony's place. Suddenly in his jacket, he found the same envelope that had still not been opened. There were keys inside. Adam realized it had something to do with the secret the concierge had mentioned. Adam tells Helen that he needs to leave in the evening, but she doesn't respond. Entering the next room, Adam saw a gigantic spider. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.